Hi, I'm Michael Ash, founder of Yogini Project, a sub-project Dakinius Art Galleries, and I'm with Dakinius Art artist, painter Tiffany Gyatso from Brazil. And this is the first installment in a series of new uh, inner dialogues we're doing at Dakinius Art to really give an opportunity to get to know the artist, to have the artist um, dialogue with each other about their art, their inspiration, to see them learning from each other and sharing with you. And through this series, we hope to raise awareness of um, practicing artists, practicing in modern context, the um, challenges and opportunities find today, and for them to discover each other and meet each other and for people to value the need to support um, non-monastics who aren't necessarily tanka painters in a monastery who are in the modern world and we know what that is like for so many of us as you can hear and um, so and as well as to really get an eye behind what creates these beautiful images we see and so the artists to uh, dwell with each other and I've asked Tiffany to conduct the first series of Dakini's Art Inter Dialogues. She's, okay. she's recorded one mm -hmm. with a uh, dancer of the collective, Yuma Mudra. We're very interested in having modalities mm -hmm. between painters and dancers and singers, um, contemporary artists, traditional artists. And this is why I asked Tiffany mm -hmm. to conduct. She's had quite a global experience. We'll learn about her life shortly. And um, she also has been very um, strictly trained in traditional disciplines as well as works as a contemporary artist and having exhibited several times at Tibet House in New York. So um, to start, let's hear mm -hmm. a bit about Tiffany. What brought you to your art? Mm -hmm. You started your studying in um, traditional Tonka painting as one of the first artists, Western artists, to study at Nobelinka Institute mm -hmm. in Dharamsala. So what led you to your art, and then what led you into um, Dharamsala? Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you, mm -hmm. Michael. Yeah, it will be um, very interesting now to be talking with the other artists. I think that's the where I mostly learn. It's really by these this dialogues, this mm -hmm. exchange. So this is the whole point of having the Dakini project. It's really to put together this community of artists who have the, this not the same, but like the, 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 the focus on the path and the growing and the evolution of consciousness. So um, it's good to be in this position, to be there, to we'll be interacting with the, with the other ones. So, <clears throat> so what started, why I chose Tanka painting, uh, starting was really most because uh, of my quest. Uh, of spiritual quest and this has come I think already from my family so growing up in Brazil my mom she did a community so people living together and um, then eventually we made many trips and one of them uh, when I was 18 we bought a motorhome my parents mm -hmm. me and other two friends we bought a motorhome in Germany, it was like $1,000, with a very old, old transit from yeah. a hippie guy, yeah. and we bought it, and we wanted to make all the way to China. And so we eventually drove all the way through Russia, Siberia, and into Mongolia. We didn't cross to China because it was so many bureaucracies, yeah. but it was really, Mongolia was the place uh, where I experienced uh, Tanka painting. So yeah, going inside the monasteries and having this uh, first contact of uh, of this Buddhism very rooted. Yeah, so it wasn't uh, somewhere else. It was just there. I could feel its origin. Uh, in context. In, in yeah, all this old thing, this old soul there, yeah. and and it wasn't like I saw Tanka painting and I thought, wow, this is beautiful. It was, I even don't think it's beautiful in a way, mm. it's too colorful, but it was, it made so much sense. It was like, I know this. And then, you know, I had no doubt. Yeah. It had to happen that. Fantastic. But um, then, of course, then I had to raise money. I didn't, you know, couldn't stay there in Mongolia, so I went back to then Germany, and I was going back to Brazil, where I lived. 
And so I was, um, I thought, okay, I have to save some money now here in Germany to go back to Brazil. And I thought in, in a month I could do that, but that lasted for three years. So then... <laughs> Such so, plans, yeah, yeah. That was great because Germany gave me a lot of, I was living there alone then and I was, um, that I had this focus of saving money and, you know, working anything I could and then I got from the government, I studied uh, graphic design, so that was excellent, mm. so I got all this education in design and all. Well, then eventually going to, to India. It was uh, the teacher in Mongolia that told me about Norbolinka and he told me I should go here. Yeah. And when I wrote to them, they said um, no, that they didn't accept foreigners. Yeah. But I thought, wow, but the teacher in Mongolia told me I should go, this should make sense. And then I went anyway. And when I got there, they said, what are you doing here? No. <laughs> And then I was very shy to insist, and so I stayed in that Amsala like for three months, working as a volunteer for other organizations. Mm -hmm. Until then, eventually, I had the courage uh, to go again. And while they were, they needed a web designer, uh, so I thought to offer my services in exchange. You, did you know how to do web design? And so I, did. and mm -hmm. that was exactly what I just, um, you know, got in Germany. As a, more or less a, a course as a present, you know, a full time, one year course of web designing, graphic designing. Yeah. So then, um, and then I came there, and they were happy to to have a web designer. And I said, yeah. well, but I, you know, in exchange, I want to learn. And they thought it would last a month. Oh. And then eventually, it was I was studying there for three years. Wonderful. You know. And it was really hard. I understand why they didn't. Um, except foreigners, of course, because the intent is, is to preserve Tibetan culture. Yeah. And, uh, of course, they will focus on Tibetan people, yeah. who, what other place they can, you know, uh, be in exile and study their own art, is their art, their culture. So, of course, the intention is you know, on them. And it was all taught in Tibetan, and I didn't speak Tibetan. Okay, you know, that's enough. And, and, of course, they were majority, well, when I entered was only men, so, uh, you know, a uh, 20 years old Brazilian who doesn't speak Tibetan, being this class with men wasn't a good idea, but when, I stayed in my corner. What year was this? was 2003. 2003, so they had already been in exodus for some years, but Norba Link yeah. Institute's really been at the heart of preserving yeah. Tibetan culture. Right? Yeah, founded yeah. by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Very near his monastery, there in Danamsala. It's not in Danamsala, it's a bit lower there. Mm. And it's a beautiful place. Mm. Really. But somehow they, they're out in the world. Yeah. Things are unfolding the way it yeah. is. And so you wound up at the doorstep. And, yeah. and, and I, after, after I enter uh, a year, a year and a half later, then it came, enter other two Tibetan girls. Uh, they enter. Well, and today, uh, which we are 2016, they open also to foreigners and also in a way like short courses they, so they saw really there is a big interest in, mm -hmm. in foreigners wanting yeah. to learn traditional arts if done well it can preserve the culture the yeah. interest yeah. yeah and especially because also we see a lot of um, i would say um, let's say about tanka painting you, you be used as a decorative motive you know, which is, yeah, it's okay, you can do anything you want, but it's really, it's an art um, made with a purpose, so, you know, it's like, it's a functional art, you know, it's not a decorative, so it is um, the icon, it's made to unlock things in your practice, um, open doors for your yeah. practice, open your vision for practice. And when we don't know, we are not educated about these icons, this effect will be lost. Yeah. So I think it's very important uh, also for foreigners, because Buddhism is getting so strong in the, in the West too, so this education and the visual arts uh, gets also open to, to foreigners. Mm -hmm. So that then also the effect of what Tanka, the, the spirit of Tanka is, can really 
you know, be strong and be yeah. effective. I mean, if it loses this root as a meditation of uh -huh. support, yeah. then it's its whole purpose. Yeah, it's decorative because yes. it's, it's pretty. You know, you you see, you see, it's pretty, and and you remain as you are without any yeah. affecting transformation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same as we looking at Japanese, you know, yeah. we think it's beautiful but it's yeah. meaningless. Yeah. And we know how profound it can be a text in Japanese, but if we don't learn how to read, it's only decorative. Yeah. So it can yeah. happen that it's And essentially with deities, which become a reflection yes. of how you really are yeah. and are indivisible with yeah. compassion, but compassion yeah. with a force yeah. um, beyond the veils. Yeah. So this is quite exacting as an art. So I have two questions. One is, how long did it take to learn Tibetan? Mm -hmm. And then two, it's learning to appreciate that it's a meditational support. Mm -hmm. The exacting discipline to be true to that, how long did that take? Yeah. Well, you know, the Tibetans, they all learn pretty well English. Mm -hmm. So my Tibetan was never fluent, never. Right. So I didn't. My teacher, in Nurbulinka, he he never learned English too, so he knew only Tibetan. So we were very <laughs> yeah. that, that kind, and it was good, you know, it was good. And my um, the students there who spoke English, they helped me a lot. So I had other tutors too. I had other teachers inside the the class, uh, which I could make questions. But they were they are a culture um, of whoever holds the knowledge tend to be very humble, you know. Yes. So when I asked them, please teach me, they would say, no, but I don't know anything. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes you know. Yes. You know, so it took, everything took long. Everything yes. took long. It's and a different pace. Yes. It's a different pace. That's why to learn this art from the masters, you need time because they want, it's not because they don't want, it's culturally they are like, they, it's it's little by little. They don't see this is a you know, shining world, and I'm shining, and yeah. you know, I'm, I'm an artist. And they don't have that, so they so it's difficult. That what I thought was the biggest obstacle. And I have a teacher now that he's outside from Nordbrinka. He has his own studio, but he doesn't teach. And I was always telling him, Kama. Please teach, you know, he was married to a good friend of mine, she's German, so his English was good. Mm. And I told him, you know, teach me, and no, I don't know, I don't know. And he was the best, he is the best Tanka painter, you know, yeah. painter in Denimsal. Eventually, after a few years, three years later, you know, then I came, sat next to him, I said, I'm just sitting next to you, it's okay, baby. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was sitting there three you months. Learned, you learned how to work and then, And then he, oh my God. Okay, you know, no, no, you're doing wrong, not this way. Okay, how is it, you know, so, so we went, so, yeah, in Nurbulinka was for three years then, yeah. so I exchanged in, in exchange work, so half of the day I was working, half I was in the studio learning, we sat on the floor, um, and was basically, tanka painting is copying. So, um, a lot of people say, yeah, then it's not art, because, right. You know, it's not original, it's not, you, you're you not doing anything, you're just copying. And, and yes, it's true, like, Tiffany itself never showed anything. Yeah. Because it's not about Tiffany expressing, yeah. it's about this body being a channel to express only art which is focused on the divine, only uh, materializing an object to serve as a, um, as a support for practice. Yeah. You know, so they don't sign anything. It's not about me. Yeah. You know, it's about being a support for a transcendent world. So, so as an artist, for, for me, I thought doing tanka for only tanka for many years was very important because it was cleaning this uh, this channel. It was yeah. like a tube, and it's just cleaning, and it's not about um, about having a strong identity, Tiffany strong uh, but but in a way it gave me strength you know but to serve you know also later in the art I was uh, then doing by myself but also this discipline of dedication you know it was it opened so many doors you know inside myself mm. you know, to be able to dedicate that mm. I'm getting a real sense as you speak mm -hmm. of that popping mm -hmm. about you know it's interesting mm -hmm. this word art 
Mm. It's actually linked to this word artifice. And when mm -hmm. you're saying that no extra expression is like no artifice, yeah. we don't make things up. Yeah, it's yeah. the same with meditation yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. You're not conjuring yeah. conjecture. We're, we're learning to like actually dissolve the clouds. Yeah. And that there's a discipline and rigor there to make sure mm -hmm. that what comes in, otherwise so much art is self-expression. Yeah. But if, if a heightened sense of self is actually yeah. the cause of the suffering mm -hmm. that we and others experience, yeah. mm -hmm. of course, to go that direction. So a humbling process where you, you learn not to self-express mm -hmm. to a degree that you have the humility and discipline mm -hmm. to be present with mm -hmm. what's there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get to later, what comes later in your path when you switch to contemporary art, having gone through that process, where hopefully you have some non-self-expression mm -hmm. at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you see, I also one of the things that um, attracted me to Tanka, it's because uh, as a teenager then, I loved to painting, and, but mm -hmm. all what I did, I didn't like, I didn't have the technique, so I was very insecure, like a lot of people feel when they paint, and yes. they think, oh, it's not good. So suddenly then I thought, oh, Tanka, it will give me structure and I'm safe. Uh -huh. So in a way it was, yes. let's say, the, the, the ego decision, you know, the identity decision was like, I'm safe here. Uh -huh. you know? And I'm safe not only in painting technique, but I'm safe because I'm in the path. Because my biggest fear is to, how can I say, to, to, to fall asleep, to forget. Uh -huh. Uh, and, and then I thought, well, it's an art, I love painting, it will teach me how to paint. And it will be always showing me the path. Hey, look at this, look at the divine, look at the divine. So that what really motivated me also. And then, and then practicing many years, then I, I got the security. I said, hey, it doesn't matter what I do now, because my motivation is aligned enough to look at the divine. Whatever I do, if I cook, if I clean, or if I do now a big mess with paint, mm -hmm. it is the divine. Fantastic. It's not only Tanka painting, yeah. it's the divine. So it gave me the, the, yeah, the security, the authority in my heart to say, this is divine too. If I sign it, or if I don't sign it, mm -hmm. it's the same. Yeah. And it's not only an uh, intellectual thing that, that I came to, it was really in my heart. Yeah, not only that, but also then practicing Tanka, it was, it was compressing a creative energy in me. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, it was like a pressure cooker. You know, like, <laughs> and then when I came back uh, from India, I came back uh, pregnant. So I had my, my son. Uh, of course, near my mom, uh -huh. <laughs> mom. So I came back to Brazil. Uh, his father, Tibetan, uh, came also. He lived a few years uh, with us in Brazil, and today he, he lives in the States. Yeah. And and then I was when Adrian was born. He was six months old. I got this invitation to paint this um, temple in south of Brazil. Yeah. Because you see, when I came when I came to, to Brazil, I thought I don't have money. I'm pregnant, and all what I know to do is tanka. How nice! <laughs> and I'm living by my mom. I left home when I was 16, and I come back, big belly, 24. Yeah. And I was. It seems sounds like so, a, sounds like on the outside appearance like a dead end, yeah. but this was actually a great it opportunity. Was it, was it was the beginning. This is a beautiful teaching yeah. for so many. Yeah. Especially yes, a woman, you know, yes. in Zakini. Because I, I thought, yeah, like I said, dead end. <laughs> we had no money. I'm back to my mom's house. I just know Tanka. Yeah. I had Tail no, was between your legs. Yeah, yeah, and I had no real contact with my country anymore. Oh, yes. And I was there. Sure. I didn't know anybody anymore. All my school friends, they didn't know about Buddhism. Yeah. You know. And, but somebody told me something interesting, you know, the, the child comes with its karma too. Mm -hmm. And that kind of made sense, made sense. Yeah. Because he was six months old and Lama something, Lama Palma something, he's a, a Brazilian Lama, he heard about me, he was having problems of bringing Tibetan uh, painters to Brazil with visa nice. and all, you know. So he gave his try and I think Lama something was very courageous because all what I've done was small tankas and I did two temples in India but it was 
under the shadow of my teacher. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was like, uh, and he was very courageous because you imagine I, I came there to the temple, this huge white temple, like 400 uh, square meters, you know, floor it was a lot of walls, and I came there with my baby, six months old. I didn't sleep for six months, so I had this black hair, was like that face, and he looked at me. And he trusted, and he said, would you paint this? And I don't know what happened, I said, yes, I paint. <laughs> when I came out, I said, what? What paint will I use? This is a human place, what? and then it came, tick, 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 tick. But then, when I, 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 that's how I think it was made, it wasn't, it wasn't Tiffany. Mm. All the time I trusted, hey, you put me here, you know, you, yeah. You gotta do it, you know. So I really felt all the time the presence. Yeah. Even when I didn't know things was working out, you know, I didn't let fear be my master. Mm -hmm. you know. Of That's course awesome. fear came and I oh, okay, calm fear, you know, but let's do because we have work to do, you know. Yeah. It was it was very and people also it was a process, it was a project of five years, you know. Yeah, this is extraordinary. Yeah. Five, five years, years is a lot. I just imagine pain. Yeah. Five years. Five years. And of course I stopped for three months and I went back to India to charge up. Uh, you yeah. know, and that, so I had big breaks. Okay. So, but all with the big breaks it was like five years. But even with the breaks you, you had a half painted temple yeah. waiting yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. It was always there and Arun growing and all that. But uh, and people ask me, oh, so did you have visions? And that? No. <laughs> no visions, no big. Do you make mantras all day? Oh, sometimes I'm hearing here, you know, Led Zeppelin, one or whatever. <laughs> and they say, oh my God. You know? So it's all this. Also, when I came to India, I was thinking, oh, monks painting walls, painting tankas, you know, yeah. they are, and they, the Hindi Bollywood songs, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> doing tankas. So the it's such humans here. Yeah, and I think uh, at the end, I think Dharma is very silent. You know, when Dharma is happening. You don't see, because it's very easy, you know, to be holy, yeah. to look holy. Yeah, appearances. Appearance is so yeah. it's so easy to me, yeah. you know, and yeah, I, I and that so makes so me easy. yeah that makes me very uncomfortable to feel that I'm tricking myself being holy. Oh, now I will do mantra, and yeah. then I look at myself. I look how holy you are. Yeah. You know, and why are you thinking? Oh, maybe it would be better to hear yeah. rock and roll while I'm painting. Yeah. 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 You know, this is all the divine. When you trust, you know, and your intention, your motivation is pure, you can hear whatever you want, yeah. you know, and, and, and still raise the energy. And this is about being, what I said, being autonomous with your energy. Mm -hmm. When motivation is clear. And I think the most important for a Tanka painting, whatever he does in appearances, is, is motivation. And how you work with that. And, and this is the way that the Dharma is yeah. really. Yeah. If, yeah. if any pure, pure yeah. teacher comes around again yeah. and again, foremost in importance yeah. is the motivation. Yeah, and this is what our gurus like make, the you know. They is always the first thing he does while he teaches is let's yeah. align our motivation. And right. again, not the appearance of motivation. Yeah. I've been to yeah. teachers and I've spoken at all and they say, Oh, that sounds like the wonderful motivation of what a good Dharma practitioner is gonna say, yeah. but where are you at? Yeah. And yeah. so yeah. If you want to be really the holy, we'll start working with yeah. fear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 and it's silent. Nobody will know, probably, yes. when you're practicing, and they shouldn't. Yeah. It's, it's better, you know. Yeah. Just... So then, uh, yeah, so that's how wonderful Tanka is, because it aligns art and practice. Mm -hmm. But all the time, uh, even if it's a very structured uh, art, it, uh, it still from the inside. You have to work it out. Yeah. You have to find your own master here. You know? yeah. Let be led by it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the discipline and humility isn't a, a lazy path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. pick up on a, a few things that you mm -hmm. you mentioned through this um, in the what is it two years now that I've known you, being your friend yeah. since we yeah. started Jakinia's art, and I was yeah. living in Bali and yeah. connected yeah. from Brazil. You've impressed me as an artist and as, as a person how much you, you speak at times about being present with one's demons and working with fear. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the energy I feel that your art, in both contemporary and traditional, has is this 
as you've been talking about the process coming mm -hmm. to first uh, arriving in Norba mm -hmm. and having been shy, mm -hmm. you actually wound up to the door by through persistence, not through, and then winding up at, um, is it something, Lima yeah. something? Lima something, yeah. 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 And painting, you, you needed mm -hmm. to remain with it. Mm -hmm. So, could you speak a little bit about fear? Because we both, we, we don't want to um, always go for security that's actually based on insecurity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually yeah. acting from insecurity, there's a certain yeah. level of being uncomfortable. Yeah. And in the space of fear, I remember once I was at a point of transition and I said, oh, right now, Everything's coming. You were like, "Oh, wonderful!" <laughs> yeah. And so, speak about a little about this energy and how that, uh, how you learned about that or worked with that with your art. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it did occur things in my life very punctual that the demons came and I had no choice. So I was very, very uh, steadily and nicely doing tanka, you know. So. So Tanka is about how oh, I know I'm in the right path because, mm. you know, it's, it's structure and it's visual, okay, it's in the right path. And then, um, and then events in my life occur that it was like cuts of identity. It's like, you know, just like identifying myself with, um, I'm, a, I'm a depressed person, I'm an angry person, I'm an impatient person, especially in motherhood, huh. that rose like... I haven't had sleep for a year. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, everything happening, separation, and having yeah. to raise a child, and painting, and having motivation, and, and feeling, and identify myself with the negative part. And uh, while it's the same like, you look at the mirror, and you look only at your belly. You know? <laughs> And we know what's that. Everybody knows yeah. that. And I was so I was fixated on that. And then I said, um, it was maybe a year like this, and I'm still painting the temple. But that was going on in my mind. And then I was questioning myself um, if it was true what I was doing. Mm. So, so then the, the the whole effect of pressure cooker was was there, and it was. It was good because when it when I let it come out, it came like an explosion, and that explosion was when I was then painting like crazy, in a in an intention that it didn't allow me even to question if it was right or wrong because it came out like, and I was. Uh, so it was it, a source of energy. It that. was a source of energy. Yeah. And I think. Uh, especially something that I realized so uh, it came out to be so true to me that especially in the West we um, how do you say that we avoid everything which is negative in the sense oh if you are angry if you are sad if you're depressed this is bad this is bad and you should avoid you should, you should be happy mm. why are you sad and then you feel guilty because you're sad <laughs> and then you put a face and then so it's all wrong yeah. and then i realized that that hey if 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 i was born like this and i'm sad or i'm angry i'm jealous i'm i'm, I'm confused this is part of my essence this is what phenomenon is bringing me it's manifesting uh, use it yeah. also to the done, also to the art, also to your path. Don't use only the butterflies and what's pretty. Yeah. You know? So it was. So it's it. when there's a storm hitting yeah. outside. You're use not it. like it's yeah. a sunny weather. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, oh, quite a storm. So going you on. use and every any experience that rises should be valid mm. for your path, because then oh, this is good to reach God. Oh, this is not good to reach God. Go, go yeah. under the carpet. Yeah. You know. You you are you making a bad face. Oh, you're not good for reaching God. Yeah. So I thought, wow, this is the, the, that's um, how do you say that? Hypocrit hypocrit hypocritical. Hypocritical. Yeah. So then I thought, okay, let's use this energy. And in the same and case, for reaching towards Buddhahood. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought, okay, let it run. Everything is wrong. Everything is so wrong in me. Yeah. So wrong. Yeah. So and so wrong. Yeah. And then it came, who, who are you doing so wrong? 
and then it rises like that and then bloop, it, it turns the other way. Fantastic. You know, and in the sense, like, I don't think you need to be courageous or anything. Uh, you need to use your fear. You just have it's, to it trust. Like, it seems to be a degree of honesty as well. Honesty, yeah. Honesty. Honesty. And trust. I, I'm afraid just this is just, okay. Yeah. I'm terrible. Yeah. I'm terrible. Use but, it. But you're you and you're honest with it. Yeah. So you're not uh, hiding in yeah. some element. Yeah. And so then you've got this strain, all this information that's yeah. not information, but also yeah. energy yeah. that's yeah. caught up in. Yeah. And then as an artist, yeah. You are able to express it. How would yeah. you share from that experience? Would you yeah. think someone who's not an artist, someone who, who may see and say, "Well, I have all these things, but I don't know how to express this." Yeah, I think hmm. I see.